How's it going everybody? I should Reaper31 here and welcome to this tutorial video explaining the game board for the Master League that I'm playing here on PES 2020. I've had a few questions asking about how exactly the board works in general. A lot of you love the idea of the board itself and it's working out pretty good so far. So it's time I did a little video just explaining that in general. But uh, I'm going to talk about a few house rules that need to be applied before you start the Master League. Um, and also, I'll go into the game board itself once we get started. So first things first, um, some of the settings, general settings that you need to start that I highly recommend you do. Um, set your starting budget to normal and disable the first transfer window. The next thing I would recommend is going to the Scouting tab here and making sure your instructions um, you only have one scout enabled which I do and they're only scouting your home region um, which in my case is Italy and also make sure your budget is on consider not reject everything else um, totally up to you the next thing I would do is go through your entire squad here and put one focus point into whatever you want it's totally up to you into each of your players. They should not be on balanced or a particular playing style. Just put them on one point focus training. I would also do this for the youth team as well, as shown here. <clears throat> Next on the agenda is uh, going through the squad and putting players on the uh, transfer policy. So setting the transfer files of your players is important when you start out your Master League. It helps um, filter the AI from buying all your players. And some of the ground rules I would recommend for this is whenever a new player comes into your squad, you need to put a refuse all on him until the end of the season, and then you can take it off. So when you start the Master League, I would go through and look at websites like Transfer Market, or any other um, site that, that covers the, the transfer listings that happen within the year for your players. So realize Zuccolini uh, is new to this side. That's why he has Refuse All. And I've gone through and done this for every player that is on the squad. Um, so that way they're not being bought out. You know, it's, you know, it makes no sense they come in for less than a year. So you, know, you want to keep them on for at least a year. So that's why I put Refuse All on them. Um, and then if you decide you want to transfer list or loan list players, uh, once you do that, you need to make sure that that player is not being used at all. So you're pretty much saying, I'm not going to use this player throughout the campaign for the rest of the season. So he needs to be transferred or go out on loan. So if, if even if you run into an issue where you need him, you cannot use him because you've already said you don't need him for the year. So um, just be aware that if you do invoke the transfer list of the loan list option, you are going. You are pretty much saying to that player, no, not you are not welcome at the club this year, and wait for him to get transferred before uh, playing him again. Okay, so here is the game board, and we're going to explain a little bit how all the squares work within my master league itself. So. How I go about this is at the start of every match, I hit a dice roll, and wherever I land, that's what I have to do. It can either help or hurt my squad for the upcoming match, or help my or help or hurt my chances of being successful in the Master League. So the first square I'm going to talk about is the kickoff square. So the kickoff square is where you start. It's also if you go around the board and land on it again, that will um, make you uh, change your starting budget you can increase it so I'm at normal right now so if I land on it again guess what I can move it up to fairly large which means I get more bonus points to uh, all uh, my bonuses so I get a little multiplier times my all the income coming in so that means I get more money um, the, the next tab I'm going to talk about is the game plan change and that is one of the most frequent ones on the board so what the game plan changes do is forces me to go into my game plan and change whatever of the seven 
instructions either attacking or defensive I have to change it for the appropriate match so if it says change attacking style I gotta change it from counter attacking to possession and so on for all of them so if uh, this this helps keep the team spirit low this also forces me in some instances to change the formation to better suit the uh, instructions that I'm being forced to use for the next match and you that has to stay you cannot change it back once you land on that square you have to keep it until you land back on that square and it tells you to change it back so um, you'll be this helps um, create a lot of fluidity in the gameplay tactics that way you're just not sticking to one formation not one set of instructions the entire time just building up your team spirit and then just blowing the competition away because you've got such high team spirit okay I'm gonna uh, jump ahead to the player upgrade square next so player upgrade square is implies gives um, my players a chance to gives upgrades to my players and it does this in a number of ways one um, you can add a training point a focus training point to any player as you can see here let me just sort so if I get um, this I can increase this to two and I can only move it up one at a time but I can do this for every player in the squad and the youth team. So it's a very good square because that way it helps grow your players a little bit better instead of just being stuck at one for focus training. Um, another thing that the, that square does is um, also in the training is set a um, playing style. So or. Um, I could change a, a playing style if I don't like the player that's using it or I can give a player one if it, they don't have one I would just set it to whatever they want um, and then uh, once he's learned that I would probably choose roaming flanks he's already a pretty good winger um, I let it I'll keep that on him until he's learned it and once I know he's learned it and I've gotten a notification that he's understood it I would put him back on the focus training Another training that this player does is skill training. So if I get a skill training uh, thing, I could do this for one player only. Um, just go in and give that player you know, a skill training just to help bolster his stats a little bit. And that's totally up to you which player you want and how you want to do that. The next thing that the square does also upgrade your scouts. So if in order to get more scouts, because we started with one, if I land on that and it says unlock new scout, I can unlock a new scout. Um, also, it gives me a chance to upgrade my area. So if I don't, so if I get that, then instead of just Italy, I get to, I get to scout all of Europe. And then obviously if I get it again and I unlock the next level I can scout the whole world just simple as that that's all you really that's all that needs to do for that um, but that's it for player and upgrades so the next one that we're going to talk about is contract extension um, it's a pretty a big one so with contract extensions you have to keep a couple of things in mind um, you can contract extend as many players as you want with the with the caveat that they've at least played a game for you and their contracts about to come up which means uh, they're gonna expire after the season or um, the sporting director recommends that you give him a, an upgrade now or an extension now so you can see here Di Marino my top player his contract's gonna expire in a year so I would go in and make this change so um, if I get the increased salary I would increase his salary obviously to more just one click more than what he's currently getting I would set his years to the next year so he's expired in 20 so make sure um, it it expires in 21 um, if I got the max contract length, I would offer just the max contract. You can see here, I could I could only offer him four years. 
uh, yeah. yeah, I could offer him a three-year deal. Um, if it says increased release cost, then I would up this release cost by one click. Same goes for if I land on appearance bonus, goal bonus, or win bonus. And then obviously I would, I would either he would either come back and be okay with it, or have some changes, or reject it outright. But you could do this on any player as long as they've met the rules. They've played a match, they've played at least one match for you, and their contract's coming up, or the sporty director tells you you need to extend them. All right, and that's contract extensions. I'm gonna skip managed squads. I'm gonna explain that a little later. Scouting list. So the scouting list is obviously your scouting list. So whenever the the scout comes back, and I don't have brings finds the players that um, that you could bring into a squad that fit your budget, um, you could put a bid on them. Until you land on that square, you cannot put a bid on any of the scouted players. So if your scout found a really good player, but you're just waiting for uh, to land on the square and you just miss out, just tough luck. So um, just whoever is in the, the list as you uh, land on that square, you can put a bid on only one of the players. So you have to pick which players you want out of that square and then just hit the bid and put a bid on one of them. You can only put bids on multiple ones if you land on the square a bunch of times. So uh, and now, keep in mind, it's just putting in a bid. You can't accept or reject the bid after you placed it. It's just to go ahead and put a bid on these players that come from this list specifically. Uh, the next one I want to talk about is free agent. And we're going to talk about uh, three of these in, uh, in, uh, together because they kind of are grouped together. So in the advanced search, you have the opportunity to scout players accordingly. Um, I happen to have up here the free agent one. So whenever I land on the free agent, um, the board will tell me if uh, what type of player is, that I can buy is either a goalkeeper, a defender, a midfielder, or an attacker. I have my choice any depending on it can be in any position, register position that they're defender, midfielder, goalkeeper, or uh, forward. As long as they fit within my annual salary budget, they have some type of team role, and they are a free agent, obviously. Um, so, and then the next square, obviously, also is transfer and loan list. So I'll talk about that as well. So I'm going to pull up the transfer and loan list players. Um, kind of the same as before, players that work within both the market value and the annual salary and that are transfer listed and also have a team role assigned to them. Um, it's important to find players with team role because they, they will give you bonuses that will help either grow the players and in turn and help train your own players or get better skills and in turn make you more money. So it's important to have those versus players that don't have a team role yet. So there's transfer list and loan list. Um, when you land on the transfer and loan list square, um, you typically want to do the transfer list one. If you can, if you can't, and you want to save a little bit of money, then you could, you could go down the loan list route, be it that uh, if your salary budget is hurting a little bit um, or your money's tied up and you just want to bring on players on loan, you could use the loan list in lieu of the transfer list. But um, typically you want to lose the transfer list over the loan list. But um, the choice is yours. The choice is yours at the time. And then the, f the final one we're going to talk about is the Youth Academy Square. So the Youth Academy Square functions the same as a free agent. When I land on that square, I get my choice of a... Uh, hold on. I skipped right over to that. <laughs> it's um, your choice of a midfielder, defender, uh, a forward, or goalkeeper. Depending on what the board tells you, you can buy. Um, and um, it's totally up to you who you sign. And you, but you have to sign at least one player to come up to your squad. And it's not somebody you have to bring on loan, but it's somebody you need to um, bring up for the squad. It, but this way it helps um, use your youth team. I know a lot of people don't like using the youth players because, one, they're generic to start with, and two, they're you know bad regions so but you still um 
I still feel like you could use them if you land on the Youth Academy square. So those squares are talk about how to buy the players and it's just putting in a bid. So I will preface this that whenever you put in a player for bid, you cannot accept it. Um, you just put in a bid and whatever they come back with, if they agree to it, you just have to leave that deal in place because the only way you can accept or reject a deal outright is by the managed squad square. So this affects your decision making when it comes to either selling your players, buying new players, or contract extensions. So either one of those three options will either tell you to accept or reject either of those three. So if I if I go in there and let's say I bought a youth player, let's say I've got a bid on a player here, right here you can see, and um, all of a sudden, you know, I get the reject bid offer. Um, you know, it's uh, if I say reject all bids, so I have to go in there and reject every bid I have on a player. It doesn't matter if I worked out the deal and it's going to work and I can afford him and I'm looking forward to bringing it in. It just, I automatically cut the deal. It automatically kills the deal. And also in turn, if I get the accept deal, then I have to accept all those deals. Same goes for transfer uh, contract extensions. If I get a contract extension all lined up and I've got all my players lined up, if I get reject all contract extensions, then I have to get rid of all the contract extensions I did. So it could really hurt your team, but also it could really help your team as well. Um, this also helps when you're dealing with the AI. The AI constantly barrage you with offers, especially when you play on higher transfer uh, frequencies. So you're constantly, you, you can negotiate those at any time as they come in. You can go into a negotiation with any player, that any club that wants to buy your players, but you cannot accept that until you land on the managed squad square. And if you land, if you got a deal worked out, and it doesn't work out then with the reject all the players to sell then you got to reject them all or buy them all so that pretty much covers 99 percent of the game board so now it comes to the very difficult part of the game board and that is the dilemma tab so the dilemma tab is obviously a very uh, bad square to land on as it it will uh, affect your team very uh, quickly um, and it's an immediate effect. You have to do whatever it tells you to do here. And it has a, I think, six different things you can land on. Um, the biggest ones you can do is release your highest market value forward or midfielder or defender or goalkeeper in your squad. So, and I, and I tend to do that as market value because I don't believe overall is a very good barometer of how good a player is. The market value is what the player's value is. So I tend to, um, a little top tip, um, use market value as you're sorting out your depth chart. So what if my highest rated forward, which is, uh, you know, Di Marino, he's on the chopping block. So if I say lose your use your top rated attacker, your forward, um, obviously, since I'm at the beginning, I don't have it, but there'll be a release player button down below here, player management, and you have to automatically cut him. Um, you get no reprieve, it's just an automatic, he's off the squad. Your best player is off the squad. Um, this also, there's also one for a youth prospect, so how do you determine your youth prospects? You go over here to um, team role list, and whoever is your highest highest market value youth prospect or protege they get the axe so you could use some really you know players you're building up you could end up losing them uh, as part of the risk and there's no even if you have them protected and they just signed a cut to cut you get you can't do anything about it um, and then the final thing that the dilemma tab can do is affect your bonuses for uh, this the general settings here at the starting budget so if you land on that and you get the decreased starting budget option then you have to drop it down from normal to fairly small so that's where the kickoff comes in handy if you land on that they can obviously fix that um, but in the long run this could really hurt you if your starting budgets uh, bonuses 
goes down because then you're not getting as much money to income and you really don't have the income to bring in new players and so you're forced to have to sell or um, restructure your squad a little bit better but that is it ladies and gentlemen for the board itself um, I hope I explained this all to you as best I could um, let me know what you think um, about this uh, this board in general. If there's things I could do to make this board better, I'm all ears. Um, this board um, has been through a few iterations um, as I've gone through it this this fall, putting it together. Um, so there could be times where I could be adding things to this. Um, I could think of a few things that I may want to add later on down the road. But for now, this is what I'm going with. Um, let me know what you think, and if you're interested um, in getting a game board, they're pretty easy to make. You know, I just made this on Excel, pretty straightforward. It's nothing special. Um, you can do it yourself, or um, if you want some advice, I can be glad to help on how to do that. Um, but that's going to do it for me, guys. Um, thank you so much for uh, sticking through this entire tutorial. I know it was a bit long-winded, and I hopefully I explained everything in enough detail to how this Master League is going to work in general. So um, you guys take care, and I will see you guys next time.